Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bass Fishing. This week I'm in Onalaska, Wisconsin, and we're doing a mock kayak bass fishing tournament to bring you the emotional roller coaster of fishing the kayak bass fishing tournament series. Today we're doing something a little special. We get asked all the time to talk about tournament fishing, and more specifically to talk about tournament fishing strategy techniques, tactics, the things that go into being a successful tournament angler. So we just finished up the Kayak Bass Fishing Trail, Mississippi River, and this guy right here is your 2018 Lacrosse Trail Champion, Mr. Eric Siddiqui from Cincinnati, Ohio. Eric is a regular on the Kayak Bass Fishing Trail, and the title, the champion title has escaped him until yesterday. So Eric agreed to hang out and help us demonstrate and illustrate how to fish a kayak tournament. So he's only got about three hours of pre-fishing to get in today. And then tomorrow we're gonna put it all together and bring you guys a mock tournament episode. So for this tournament, I expected it to be largemouth fishing, uh, up shallow, punching, throwing frogs. When I came out, I started doing that and I was catching a lot of pike. And there was an area around an island that I wanted to check out. So I went out there to check it out and managed to find some good fish there. So it kind of changed my whole idea what I was going to do for this tournament. This whole area is just full of grass, hydrilla, lily pads. This island, one of the things that I liked about it is the back side of it has no grass. It's just a rocky drop off. A lot of times bass will look for those different things in a lake. Oh, there we go. This is a good fish for tournament day. Good fish for any day. Tell you what, this is quickly turning into one of my favorite fishing spots. It's always fun when you catch smallmouth and largemouth in the same place. Let me tell you about where we're at. We're in Lake Onalaska. Lake Onalaska is a section of the Mississippi River uh, coming through the La Crosse County area. And these are islands that were part of a restoration project where they built 25 islands uh, in this pool of the Mississippi River. And they created great habitat, uh, but more importantly, they combated the erosion and deposition that was going on in this part of the river. It's a definite success story because uh, Mr. Siddiqui won the tournament fishing around one of these islands that were part of that project that was completed in 2012. Lacrosse is always going to have a special place in my heart because this is the first place that I've won a tournament, and I always judge a place by how good the fishing is. This is the bad boy I'm catching them on. Dirty bait. I know some people don't love the Ned Rig, but it catches fish and it catches a lot of fish. And you could fish it a lot of different ways. You could use a lot of different colors for different weather situations and water clarity and all that. And you could pretty much fish on it year round. So it's one of my favorites. Dead sticking is working today. I told Chad after I lost that first fish to dead stick it and he may wanted to make fun of it. So. I mean, if you're gonna fish a Ned Rig, you might as well dead stick it. I heard that's when most people catch fish with the Ned Rig, as they throw it out while they're putting their fingernail polish on. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yeah, that's a better one. That's a little better one. <laughs> Come here. How fast were you fishing that thing? <laughs> nice and slow, baby. A little chunky brown. What bait was that on? Uh, swim bait. <laughs> was it? Yeah. <laughs> I tried to fish a Ned Rig, but then I decided I'd rather stab my eyeball out. <laughs> I would like to share with you a short list of things that I would rather do than fish a Ned Rig. Slam my hand in a car door. Slam my hand in a car door repeatedly. Drink coffee with hazelnut flavored creamer in it. Wait, never mind, I do that. Um, anyway, so have a paper cut contest with myself. Get my chest waxed. Get my butt waxed. Own a cat. Watch someone else fish a Ned Rig. The Ned Rig, the cure for insomnia. Want to be the least interesting man in the world? Try fishing the Ned Rig. 
one. I like um, jerking it. Sometimes I'll drag it. Sometimes I'll swim it. So you can do a lot with it. It's one of the reasons it's one of my favorite baits. You know, the only thing worse than watching someone else fish a Ned Rig is having someone explain to you how to fish a Ned Rig. That hurt. You throw it out, you let it sink, you wait. You bump it, you wait. You bump it, you wait. You set the hook, you catch fish. All right, so one of the main goals of pre-fishing is to confirm that the fish are there. So Eric, what do you think, man? You think you're gonna stick with the same spot and the same pattern tomorrow? Yeah, I think uh, that pattern worked out pretty well. All right guys, so here's what we're gonna do. He's gonna check his notes one more time, retie his leaders, do all of that prep stuff that you don't wanna be doing on the water. We'll be back out here in the morning to do our mock tournament. So we'll see you guys in a few. Good morning, everybody. So like we talked about, we are going to go do a mock tournament. So when we showed up to the boat ramp this morning, true to his style, Eric was asleep in the parking lot. Let's go. We've got fish to catch. Everybody's got their own way of doing things and to stay in a positive mental attitude, a lot of folks start a little bit later because they don't want to get out there early, not get that morning bite and then have that confidence start waning. So he's got a game plan. He's got a place. He's confirmed that the fish are still there. We're going to head out there and see how he does in a day of tournament fishing. Oh, and by the way, I don't like all-star games where there's nothing on the line, where they're going out there and they're playing for fun. So I'm going to throw the gauntlet down. If he gets out there and he bests or ties his score from the actual KBF trail, next five tournaments, on me. All right, brother, get out there. <laughs> Drum catch a lot of these in tournaments they fooled me a lot of times they hit hard they fight hard but they don't count so when I came out here tourney morning I caught an eight inch smallmouth and two perch off the same spot so I took all day to grind out a good limit a little better I'm hoping I could uh, beat my score from Saturday, but we're dealing with some extra anglers fishing the same area I am. Guess word got out. I smashed them out here on Saturday, so. <laughs> you know, one of the places that Eric uh, picked to fish the tournament was not an area that was popular amongst the kayak anglers. Many of the kayak anglers went into the backwaters into the area that favored kayak fishing. Eric chose to come out and fish where there was boats. In fact, he had a lot of company fishing these islands out here, looking for those fish that were post-spawned, staging on these islands, these rocks, these drop-offs, and feeding back up to recover from the spawn. Oh, shit. <laughs> Man. <laughs> he jumped when I tried to lift him and he went right over the net. Short and fat but it'll still help. I'm catching them. Not feeling overconfident about uh, winning this challenge because I'm not catching big enough fish right now. But all it takes is a couple good ones. I think the reason Eric took home the win in this tournament is that he didn't get in his own head. He found fish, he found a pattern, so he kept it simple. He didn't do anything too fancy. He didn't second guess himself. He didn't let the fact that he was competing with uh, other boat traffic deter him. He knew there was fish there. He knew how to catch them. And he was dedicated to sticking to that technique. And he fished a Ned Rig from start to finish and took on the title. This is a 13 and a half. The smallest is 13 and a quarter right now. So I want to help a little bit. I'm getting there slowly but surely. That's a good one. Oh, mama. That's a better one, that's what I need. Ow. Small mouth definitely aren't easy to get pictures of on the board. <laughs> Fish is determined to make me look like a jackass, I think. <laughs> when I was on Kentucky Lake, I uh, was fishing an online tournament, hooked into a good fish, 
It was my last fishing of the day. I was getting ready to go. I caught it, put it on the board, took the picture. When I brought the phone down to take a look at it, the fish smacked it with his tail and knocked it in the water. So ever since then, I always keep a float on my phone. I don't take any more chances with that. I'm gonna need to upgrade four fish in the next hour and a half. Three fish if one of them is a giant, which can happen. I'd lost a giant yesterday, so. Nope, not gonna help. I should probably just stop even bothering unless they're 17 anyway. But as far as a real tournament goes, you don't know what you gotta hit to win it. All right guys, so that is gonna do it for our how to fish a kayak fishing tournament episode. Eric, the goal was you had to hit 88 and a quarter inches from yesterday, yep. and I was gonna pay five of your tournament entry fees. Where'd you end up for the day? And about 76 and three quarters. <laughs> a bit 76 shy. and three quarters. I finished with 76. So you beat me, but you didn't beat your total from yesterday, which was gonna get you five entries. But here's the deal, man. Because you're a good sport, because you hung out, because you took the folks at home through all of your tournament preparation, the things that you think about, I'm gonna go ahead and pay two of your entry fees for the next awesome, two KBF tournaments you. that you fish.